Are you preparing for Praxis Early Childhood Education Test 5025, Mathematics Algebraic Thinking? If so, then this is the video for you. Hi, my name is Tom and I am a test prep expert here at study.com and I'm going to walk you through some of the types of problems you may see. So let's get started. Which of the following equations demonstrates the associative property of addition? We have four choices on here, and one of these is going to demonstrate associative property. So what I like to teach my students is when we see the word associative, we want to think grouping. I would use the example of my associates are the group of people I hang out with. So a law firms have associates, so this is their group that they're working with. So in the associative property of addition, we're going to group each side of the equal sign differently, but we're going to wind up with the same result. So one way to do it is to have students look for the pattern. So take out the parenthesis, and if we keep the same pattern on each side, 3 plus 4 plus 5, which one of these is grouped differently? So if I group the 3 plus 4 on this side, and I group the 4 plus 5 on this side, I have the same answer. So the associative property of addition says that it's going to remain equal. So if you look at some of these other choices on here, they wind up changing the sign. So in this one, there's a minus. So that answer's out. In this one, they change the order. So they flip around the 4 and the 5. So with the associative property, the 3, 4, 5 order is going to remain the same. So this one's out. In this answer here, they have a minus sign, which changed it from addition. So the correct answer here would be this choice. Which of the following equations illustrates the identity property? Is it 8 plus 1 equals 9? 5 times 1 equals 5, 3 plus 2 equals 6, and 4 times 0 equals 0. So the identity property states that if you have any real number, so let's say we have x, and we multiply it by 1, we wind up with the same value. So that is our identity property. So if we look at our choices on here, we can see 5 times 1 equals 5. And in the rest of these answer choices, we're changing. So in other words, we went 8 and we added 1 to it and we got a new value, 9. So that is not the identity property. Same thing with the other two choices. So 3 plus 2 equals 6. Well, that is just an operation added to the 3. Now, sometimes students would confuse this with the identity property. 4 times 0 equals 0. Well, you have to talk to students about how this changed the value. So the 4 didn't remain the same as the answer we got when we multiplied by 0. We got 0 as our answer. So this is actually a different property here. So the answer is 5 times 1 equals 5. A teacher writes the following sequence on the board, 6, 12, 24, 48. Based on this pattern, which of the following would the next three numbers in the sequence be? Okay, so what we want to teach the students here is to recognize the difference between a rhythmic sequence and a geometric sequence. In a rhythmic sequence, we're going up or down by the same amount by addition or subtraction. So in this case here, showing students that this is not arithmetic because the difference between 12 and 6 is 6, but the difference between 24 and 12 is 12, and the difference between 24 and 28 is 24. So this is going up by a different amount, so this is not arithmetic. So what we want to show the students is this has to be a geometric sequence. So in a geometric sequence, we get members of the sequence by multiplying. So for example here, everything is being doubled. So 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48, and then we can continue the sequence uh, with multiplying by 2. So the answer would have to be the first choice. Mr. Scott works at Imperial Bank Limited, Nairobi. He withdrew 6,000 Kenyan shilling from his M-Pesa account. He used 2,000 Kenyan shilling to buy new shoes and divide the remaining money into four equal parts. He used three parts to settle a debt to his friend and kept the remaining part to himself. Finally, he took his two children to a nearby amusement park and paid 600 Kenyan shilling. How much money does Mr. Scott have now? This is an order of operations problem, and if we remember from order of operations, we're going to use the abbreviation PEMDAS to help us. And PEMDAS is parentheses or grouping symbols, exponents, multiply and divide from left to right, and addition and subtraction from left to right. So let's set this up as an order of operation problem. 
So Mr. Scott started out with 6,000 Kenyan shillings, and it says he used 2,000 of that first. So we're going to subtract 2,000, and we're going to group that before we divided the remaining money into four parts, before we divide by four. So we're going to have a division by four. And then it said he took his children to a nearby amusement park and paid 600 Kenyan shilling. So we're going to subtract 600 from that, okay? So with PEMDAS, we're looking at the first step is P for parentheses or in general grouping symbols. So we're going to do that first. So we're going to go inside the grouping symbol and we're going to do the operation in there. And we have 6,000 minus 2,000 Kenyan shillings. So this would be 4,000 divided by 4 minus 600. In the next step of PEMDAS is exponents, but there's no exponents here. E is for exponents. Now, multiply and divide work together left to right. So we're starting from the left and we're doing any multiplication or division. So I can see here I have the division symbol. So I'm doing 4,000 divided by 4, which is 1,000. And then I'm going to subtract off my 600. So my final answer would be 400 Kenyan shillings. That concludes our video. Praxis Early Childhood Education Test 5025 Mathematics Algebraic Thinking. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe and visit study.com for more practice questions and personalized learning plans. Thanks for watching.